How healthy is your engine? One of the easy ways to know is doing a leak down test. And in this reloaded episode from the Engine Performance Expo, we're gonna show you how. Hey folks, Lake Speed Jr. along with my buddy Ben Strader. So Here guys, we are, EFI University. Man, 1,300 horsepower. She runs pretty good on the dyno, I'll tell you. It was, uh, we were all happy with the, with the result. We, we kind of knew it was gonna make a bunch of power, but 1,300 kind of exceeded what we, uh, what we thought it might do. So He went from 1,000 to 1,300. It's just 300. Bo boost fixes everything. You know, ah, we've we've learned that along the way on this project, right? Yes. So. It, it's a kind of amazing what that little pulley can do. It, it really didn't give us much problem either. I mean, we knew uh, we did the first set of pulleys. We ran out of fuel. We only right. had a single fuel pump. So then we added a second fuel pump. And right. now he's just immediately the engine just sort of came alive. You know, mm -hmm. and, you know one thing that was interesting is that when we put the second fuel pump on, I mm -hmm. thought like, well, maybe it'll make more power on the first go around. Like maybe we didn't have enough. Nope. It pretty much made exactly the same power within one, I think. Okay. So we were like, hey, that's good. Everything was the closed loop control and the O2 sensors. Did were, its job. They were doing their job. So as that fuel pressure was dropping, it was increasing the fuel injector pulse width to give us more time to deliver the fuel needed, even though the pressure was dropping. So that was great. That was a good indicator that everything was working the way we wanted it. But then it was time to sort of wick it up a little bit. So we swapped the pulleys and man, right away, it just came alive. And we So just the pulley swap was literally 250 horsepower. Yeah, yeah, like literally first pull, bang, you know? And so uh, uh, then we tuned and tweaked on it a little bit, added some fuel, took some away, made the timing changes and stuff. And I think uh, 1,317 was the final number, which is pretty <laughs> impressive for uh, for just a little 393 inch LS. Yes, sir, it is, so. that's it. But you know, like all things, um, it's really easy to to pat yourself on the shoulder and feel great and go, man, I'm wonderful, I'm excellent. And so what we typically like to do is take a step back and go, okay, what do we have? You know, the result we got was great, but could there have been anything better? Uh, is there anything that we would like to know more about that's gone wrong? Mm -hmm. And so this is the process now where the real work kind of begins. Right. So the fun's um, over. Now yeah, it's work. yeah. Now it's yeah, down to the put the aprons back on and get dirty, you know. Yep. And so one of the things that we like to do is kind of blueprint our engine backwards now. Right. We've talked about this before about the mm -hmm. reverse blueprinting, and so um, over the next few days, weeks, maybe even months, we'll be going through. Uh, evaluating the whole package, right? So um, the first things are usually obvious. Did anything fail or break? You know, so we did oil analysis. Yep. And what did you see in there? Oh, it looked perfect. I mean, it was that was the great news of fuel dilution was spot on once we had the right fuel. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> everything dialed in right. The very little wear. Everything was actually meant. So That's great. we obviously got the fuel right, we got the viscosity right, all the parts are correct, it's running good, made 1,300 horsepower, and like you said, it's very easy at that point to just say, ah, pat yourself in the we're back, good. we're good, we're good. Yeah. no need to look any further, but as you said, you can, you need to, to not lie to yourself yeah yeah well you know and it's really easy to go that's that's good enough you know mm -hmm. but we like to say around here good enough just isn't good enough you know and so now we're going to start go fishing and say let's let's have a really close look so um starting from the top typically what we'll do is we'll just kind of look around everything with a flashlight look in the ports you know mm -hmm. are they are they dry is there oil in the ports is there anything like that going on mm -hmm. We see none of that. It's all nice and, and dry yep. and gray. And so spark plugs are another great indicator that yes. you can look at, yes. right? So um, then we get into, well, unbolt the intake and have a look around. Is there any excess material, metals, you know, broken parts, anything oil in the manifold, right. that kind of stuff. So we got that off. And now we're at the point where um, we want to try to do a little bit of cylinder health before mm -hmm. we take everything apart. So right. Couple of ways to do that. Guys can do compression tests or they can do leak downs. Right. And so we've opted to do a leak down test. So we're gonna take you guys through and show you a little bit about uh, the tool, how to use it, how to set it up. But also, um, for those of you that have been you know, doing that before, you may be familiar with the tool. One of the things that I'll typically do is just go ahead and pull all the rocker arms off now. Right. Otherwise, what happens is you're constantly fighting to get the crankshaft at exactly the right spot. So both valves are closed on the overlap, right. not on the overlap period. Yeah. And trying to get on TDC on on a uh, yeah. ignition stroke. That way you you can everything's closed. You're at the top and you can check it, yep. and that gives you your leak down. Which is if you're at the racetrack and you're doing this in the car, 
that's typically how you do it, right? That's you right. basically go through firing order and you run through it from TDC and you check it, but, and that's how I've always done it. But you know, if you don't have it exactly on TDC, it wants to roll the crank one way or the other. So now you got somebody yes, out here does. with a big bar trying to hold it. Oh and, yeah. You know, and believe it or not, that can even be dangerous if that thing really gets away from you. Oh, yeah. That bar swings around. So I just pull all the rocker arms off, and that does a couple things. Um, it makes it so that it's fairly irrelevant where we are, because once we put air in that cylinder, it's just going to push that piston to the bottom. Right. Um, now, you could argue that there could be more wear at the top of the cylinder than the bottom. So if you wanted, you could check it at the bottom, and then you could roll that thing around and hold it with a wrench at and the top. check it at the top, too. Yeah. Um, but typically, if there's a problem, a major problem in leakage, we're going to know and aside from that, we're already planning on tearing this thing down and of course. we're going to have the heads off, we're going to profilometer the cylinders, we're going to measure with bore gauges. So, I mean, at this point, we're just making sure there's no major problems. Right. Well, the reality is these are one millimeter, one millimeter, two millimeter oil rings. Yeah. So for 1,300 horsepower, for most people, that's a thin ring. That's a really thin ring. for. Oh, that and by the way, we did gas port the ring and it is gapless. So that's right. that, that top ring has been <laughs> willed on quite a bit so there's not a lot of material it's pretty skinny in there relative to a even as a standard you know one millimeter ring so that's right this yeah. is a quick and easy way to know before we actually pull the, the pistons out to know how are those rings holding up how do they fare yep. with 1300 horsepower well i'll tell you what um show us the tool you brought we'll talk a little bit about it and then okay. we'll, we'll put it to work all right so this is the leak down gauge we actually sell these at total steel so this is one of these now what's cool about this is it uses your shop air so you need to have 100 psi shop air to make it simple that's because, right because what this does 100 psi and then this is 100 percent leak or zero percent leak so the idea is it's measuring how much air is leaking through the cylinder. Because it knows how much air is coming in, mm -hmm. what that pressure is, what's the pressure on the other side. So basically it's a differential pressure. This yes, is sir. what's going in, this is what's escaping out. Right. So now technically you could use this at 50 PSI as well. You could. But then you'd have to do math, right? You'd right. say, well, if I have 50 PSI here and it's only holding 42 PSI here, let's see, 42 divided by, you'd get a percentage number. 16. That's too hard. <laughs> That's, right. yeah. That's too hard for everybody to do on the fly. Right. So to make it easy, if you just put 100 PSI in, every 1 PSI that's leaking out is 1% leakage. Exactly. So that makes it real easy. Yes, so, it does. Um, so basically, you got two pieces. You got a hose. Got a hose. Yep. So this goes in the spark plug hole. And that's a typical like 14 millimeter spark this, plug. This is, bitch. yeah. So this one actually comes as a 14 millimeter. Okay. We actually do sell ones for other sizes in case you have a different size. Motorcycles, yep. whatever. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I had, I had to get one of those for the uh, engine I got at my dad's. Oh, yeah. That yeah. I've checked on. Of course, dad's has got 80 PSI shop here, so I have to do the math. Got to do, yeah. Uh, it, it, 80 PSI is harder to do on 50 PSI, by the way. So all I'm going to do, this got a little O-ring on the end of it, so I'm just going <laughs> to screw it in the port here where the spark plug would go and that's the other thing i like to take all the spark plugs out yes um just because it makes turning the engine around easier and and uh you know makes makes life a little easier so as these things come out of the box there's a little curl in the hose you gotta work it a little oh, bit yeah, to get it there, but um you don't have to like reef on this thing and torque it because of the o-rings you just have to get it up there where it's in there tight yep give it a spin um, and, I, and I recommend that you don't really reef on these because then sometimes it's hard to get them to unwind. It exactly. wants to spin that fitting. So yeah, You don't want to do that. So we're good now. And uh, I'll go ahead and take some shop air and uh, we'll, we'll plug it in. So probably, depending on where the engine is, it may want to roll over one way or the other here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold this with my other hand. Okay. And so now as I roll the pressure on here, I'll get it up here to about 100. And uh, let me do this with two hands. Coming up, and I kind of get slow. I like to get it right on 100 there. Yep. And man, those total seal rings are working today. Oh yeah, so that's the advantage of the a gapless ring. Yeah. So at gapless gas port to top ring, that 100 PSI is porcing, because remember, rings are gas activated. That's right. And this is just gas pressure. So it's pushing those rings out against a cylinder wall and it's sealing up to there's basically there's zero leak pretty much no leakage so what would happen is if you had uh something leaking whether your rings or whether it was an intake valve or a burned exhaust valve you would not only see a lower number on this gauge but you would probably hear it 
yes. coming somewhere in the engine. So that's when you'd come over here and you could listen to the engine and say, oh, I, I hear it in the oil pan, that's gotta be rings. I hear it in the exhaust, you know, that would, might be an exhaust valve or right. I hear it in my intake or whatever. So the gauge becomes a good diagnostic tool when you're doing that. So now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go around to each of your cylinders right. and record or write down what you've got. And then if you do this enough, you'll come up with like what's an acceptable number. Right. And there, and I'll be honest with you, there's no perfect number other than zero. That'd be yeah, great. that's a nice number. Um, but what I mean by that is people tend to get really carried away by a leak down number. Oh yeah. If I got 3% or 5% and then all of a sudden I got, you know, uh, eight or nine or ten percent, then I go, whoa, something changed. Right, and that's right? It's no different than the oil analysis. That's right. It's, it's whatever is normal for your engine. It's that deviation from that baseline. Correct. That's where it's a problem. I mean, that's a, a thing about Pat and Yusey when I went over to his shop a couple of years ago and we did one of the videos and he talked about nitrous tuning. They do leak down tests after every run on all the cylinders. And they actually yep. write the number down on the rocker cover. They have a relative number of what And they, they, they want to see, because if they know that, if they miss that tune-up and they hurt the cylinder, they're going to see it. Yep. That leak's going to shoot up, then they know that's where the problem is right there. But getting carried away about what the actual number is, say like on a brand new engine, can lead you down a path of like, oh my gosh, oh my God, yes. you know, especially if you have a piston with a, with a lot of rock in it, mm -hmm. you know, and it's moving around there a bunch. I mean, shoot, you could have a lot of leakage and have nothing actually wrong with the engine, especially if you have some of those really tiny rings that are not gas ported, that are not zero gapless. gapless oh, you know. perfect example. The, so the engine out at Ronnie Shavers is uh -huh. a 0.7 millimeter ring. Yep. And because we're doing endurance testing and you're running the engine for hours and hours and hours at pretty high uh, water temperatures and oil temperatures, we actually run 32 thou in gap. It's got a lot of. It's got a lot of yeah. gap for a 40045 bore. Sure. Yeah. So guess what? It leaks about six percent. Like crazy when it's new, and you might go, "Oh my gosh, this." Oh is yeah, you would say six, matter. but no, it doesn't matter. Yeah. The thing is, every time we check it, it's about that five to six percent always. It doesn't really vary from there. So again, it's it's about having that baseline. This is a tool, and it's consistency of your process consistent the results, then if you see that change, that's when you know there's a problem. Well, and something to keep in mind there, you know, you mentioned having a big, huge gap like 32 thousandths, mm -hmm. but it's only 32 thousandths when the engine's not running. Right. Right. As you get the engine running, it heats up. The whole reason of having that clearance is so those gaps get closer together. So exactly. that leak's not going to be there when the thing is running. And you exactly. see that in the blow by meter. So exactly. Anyway, I don't know about you, but uh, that was a pretty cool uh, tool you guys have there. It works great. We'll go around and do the rest of these, and I think it's probably time to tear these heads off. And uh, I think we ought to take this stuff and put it over on our Spintron and find out how our valve train was doing. I think so. Well, let's do that. Right, stay tuned.